All right, welcome to the podcast number 17. We got Jessica and Justin Creech from Bulk and Towing here to come out and our first time having guests here. So welcome, guys. Oh, man, that's awesome. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Pretty cool. Yeah. Couldn't think of any better partners. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Justin, I know I kind of gave you like a, a something that I thought would be cool to talk about, but this is really like we're not just... Um, business owners in the community, we also have a personal relationship that we have grown over the years. And so it's like, this is a special podcast because there could be levels of vulnerability that maybe you hadn't seen before because we have um, people that have gotten a chance to know us so well. So it's extra special for um, the viewers today, I think. Yeah, excellent. We get to travel with them. We get to go hang out with them. We do a lot of things on our personal time with them. I talk to Justin at least two or three times a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Unless he's out of town. Then I get to him about every 24 to 36 hours when he decides to pick up his phone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then yeah. I blow up Jessica's phone. I'll be calling him like, hey, where's your boy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, learn to learn to disconnect while I'm out on the road. And what um, you need. You know, the phone rings constantly, as you're already well off. You have a 24-hour business Man. also? Yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, it's crazy. And, if you, you guys know. didn't know, Vulcan Towing is the biggest co- uh, towing company in the state of Alaska. And with our fleet of 120 plus vehicles, they are on our speed dial. Yeah, they keep <laughs> us on the road. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we never like to see anybody off the road, but uh, we have, we're definitely there for that. So. Amen. Yeah. So, Justin, I one of the things that I know is trending in our industry right now is what is the succession plan? Like, do you have an end game? And your business is in particularly so unique because you are in the process of that that third generation shift now and that mm-hmm. is just fascinating to me that this has been something that not only have you you've taken the seed of what your father started and then you grew the business to where it's at and now you're bestowing that upon your own children and so can you tell us more about that journey yeah you know um when when I took the business, when I bought the business from my dad in 2004, uh, it was a lot smaller than this. So it was very manageable for just one person to manage. Now we have 60 plus employees and it, we're just, we're going around the clock and it's it's tougher now for uh, say my son or my daughter to step in. So what we've done differently now is we've created this management team that is going to run uh, we got an accountant on the books now, and we have a general manager that's running the operations. Um, and then, you know, my son is still pretty young. Uh, so it's going to take him probably a few more years to gather up the knowledge and um, being, like in, being in the management position yeah. um, for a longer period of time before he's going to actually be able to take the reins of it, or if, it, if at all, you know. Sure. Um, so we're, we're kind of in this weird position right now with work where it's, um, going to be really relying upon whether or not Dakota has the desire to move the business forward. Right. Um, if not, we'll have to make that decision at that point. But we're in the pro- you know, we're in that we're in that phase right now where he's figuring his life out and everything else. And uh, he seems like he's in it, like he's moving his capabilities up, mm-hmm. and he seems like this is this is the direction I want to head. Mm-hmm. And really, I think that that's something that we all need to consider when we have that that person that we think could be the one. Sometimes they just don't show up ready to go. Correct. You have to come up with a plan on how to yeah. cultivate them and give them those capabilities and train them on up. Yes. And I think that's, that's, I'm, I think that's, we want to do that for our children all day long. The fact that your son wants to do that is, yes. is amazing. Yes. And I'm encouraging him all day long, you know, let's, let's go. You got to figure out how to deal with people on a daily basis and manage these guys and show up to work on time and, you know, be the first one, first one in the door in the morning and the last one out at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. That's what it takes to run a business. And, uh, you know, that's something that you have to learn. You don't get, you just don't, you're just, most people aren't built that way. Um, and especially the younger generation. It's it's going to be interesting in the next 10 years what this <laughs> generation is going to be doing. And we were talking about that earlier in our podcast about the different generations yeah. of younger in there and yeah. how to level yourself up to different levels of where they're at and where we're at. And, you know, if you think back in the day when your dad was running it, my dad was teaching me things and stuff. It was your way of the highway. Yeah. And there was no, there was no, middle you know, ground. middle ground. But now it's like, 
it's all middle ground. It's all yeah. gray. You know, it's mm-hmm. all how you're dealing with things every day. And, you know, one thing I loved about when calling your phone and I would get your phone and you said, hi, this is Justin. And if you need to get in touch with me, you can call my son, Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> His number is, then I called Dakota. He's like, man, I am, my phone is blowing up. I'm like, did you hear your dad's message? He left your phone. Is that what's going on? <laughs> but, you know, he took it like a champ. He was, he was awesome. He was great about it. And that really helped you guys out because... Now we've all gotten in our motorhoming now and, you know, just taking yeah. off and doing our stuff and taking the team out and taking your friends out and taking your family out. That's really granted you guys a lot more flexibility in what you guys want to do. Yeah, yeah. This is probably one of the most flexible times in my entire life existence. I mean, I started riding around in tow trucks when I was 13 years old with my with my dad. And so I've been around it my whole teenage and, and adult life. I mean, I was in a tow truck at 16 years old. Uh, I went to Bartlett High School and, you know, I'd drive the tow truck to school, park it in the parking lot. And then as soon as I got out at 2, 2.30, I was in the tow truck and I was working. So I would pick my friends up and go to school in the morning and then I'd have to drop them off and I'd have to go straight to work afterwards. So, you know, this is something that I've done my, entol- my entire existence. And uh, it's really a relief to... Um, uh, to be able to do these things, um, be out, go travel around and motor home. And uh, I think it's a shock to a lot of people that I'm taking <laughs> off the time that I am, but I'm tired. I'm ready to go do something different, you know, and I haven't had a chance to do any of that stuff. So well, I don't want to say a big part of that story is Jessica. I mean, uh, yeah, your, 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 your girl there, Jess, she loves to travel. She loves to do things. She brings out a lot in you and yeah. she brings out the adventurous side on you. And I think that's been awesome. I think you guys have been a, a great team. Huge on that. compliment. Yeah. For sure. No, I mean, it's, it's been, uh, it's been great seeing you guys. I mean, that girl's a go-getter and she's out there moving and moving and mm-hmm. you're trying to keep up. And so same with me and with my wife, sometimes it's just like, we're trying to figure out where we're going to go next and shoot i think we have 11 trips on the books for this season so far with whatever all those we put in and trying to keep up with you guys now too so wow. it's just uh <laughs> you know uh, not to change subjects on that but man once we got in that motor <coughs> and we've seen that freedom of that road it changed everything i remember trying to talk it you into that holy cl- i don't know about this tra- we're gonna go rent one first we're gonna do you guys rented it it's like wow this thing was a nightmare but we're gonna go buy one <laughs> Then you're in California, Florida, all this stuff, looking all over the United States for a motor. I'm like, shit, they're everywhere, Justin. He's looking with you. Oh, we, I'm looking. I'm sending them to you. I'm sending like them to Matt. I'm no, sending he's, them, he's I, no, looking I'm sending, listings and sending them to Justin. Oh, yes. to Justin, to Brent, to Matt, to all of us that yeah. we all, what our, what our get out plan Man, is, what we're going to go do. diamond of a motor home too. Yeah. Yeah, we, we really got we lucky did. with that one. We well, did. and it was all meant to be. It was. It was. When you got to that yeah. one, that's when you right. thought it was and it wasn't right and you you weren't going to settle for something less than it was. I mean, and yeah. California, the, Texas. Nevada, Colorado Springs, <laughs> yeah. Texas, and yeah. then, you know, finally found one in Marble Falls. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's never... Never in my mouth, wildest dreams that I ever think I was going to do that. You know, and it, I think it was, I was much easier for us was because I was looking around and I found one and I called our buddy Rick and he did it. And I'm like, shit, it's in our price range. It's good. It's nice. It's got low miles. Let's send it up here. And we loved it. And as we speak right now, it's getting re, uh, reupholstered. We oh, found cool. a place down oh, in nice. uh, Florida that's reupholstered it for us. So nice. Athena found some nice diamond stitching. It's going to go in the centers and different nice. colors. So we're redoing the carpets, everything. So now we just need to get our schedules to uh, match. To match up. Amen. And then- Go cruise around. So. Now, now we're ready for that. We got some really <laughs> exciting stuff that we'll get into here in just a little bit. But yeah, cool. Uh, something we want, really want to talk to you about. Awesome. Future for Jessica and myself. So good. Yeah. Kids? More kids? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> kids, kids, I never thought a, that was ever I, 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 on in, the table. Unless yeah. we're adopting. <laughs> well, I not figured that's four legs. Yeah, yeah, I, you got lots of those. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I figured you're just going to own a greenhouse because I've seen your guys' house lately, oh, and geez. it looks like the next Bagoys. <laughs> yeah. It's really pretty. Yeah, it is. Everything's out in the, the yard right now. So. I saw that. I saw your employee sitting in the middle of the throne. Yes. It looked like the throne mm-hmm. out there. Kenny. Oh, TikTok, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. on Kenny. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got, uh, he was sitting the there in his rod. white shorts like this. And I'm thinking, he is in the he is in the Garden of Eden right there. Yeah. <laughs> Walter the fish guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Walter. Tell him not to eat the apple. <laughs> we were what created is he him. talking about? Uh, so, so about 20. <laughs> I, you guys got to clue me in. I didn't see the post. So about 20 years ago, uh, Kenny and I... We, uh, uh, so his family had some property down at Anchor Point. We used to go fishing all the time down there. And one night we were all drunk and by the fire and we were like, oh yeah, let's create a fish god. So we took this log, you know, he's probably, you know, four, five, five, foot, five tall. foot tall. 
and we carved a face in him and you know we all have our initials in the back of him and this a long time ago he's been down in anchor point uh up until last year and kenny's dad sold the property and he brought Walter We're back. Hiring. Oh, is that so every time we'd go fishing, we'd all sit back to him and we'd drink beer with him and uh we'd, you know, rub him on his head and stuff and you know, he was just always part of the family. There so you now go. we have him back and he's he's in our yard now and he's oh, got, shit. got a plant on top of his head. And he's got crazy hair. Got Walter. <laughs> yeah. We got Walter, man. He's he's back and he's live. You know? He's generation two now. He's he's going to the next location. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's, that's, cool. that's something. Yeah, which is which is pretty cool, you know. That's yeah. uh just history. Something fun. You know, I, how was it like, like, did you and your dad, when you decided to, to like fully take the reins, like what, what was that? Like for people that are, they, they have a child who's ready to take on the business and they're working this out in their mind. Like, I'm sure it probably wasn't like, oh, I'm going to get my lawyer and this lawyer. Like, how did yeah. you navigate through that piece, Justin? Because nobody ever talks about that. Like, yeah. how do you stay respectful to your parents? How do you not, um, but yet how do you, they have their way of doing things. Like, we've seen this go incredibly wrong. Like, how did you manage to yes. navigate this with Willie? So back when that happened, um, so I would have been 24 how old is Dakota right now? I bought the business, 26. Okay. Uh, I was 24. I'd already been working in the towing, you know, just like Dakota has too, because sure. Dakota's been with me since, you know, he was 18. And then he ventured off into the into the medical field for a little bit. But back on my dad. Um, so I've been 24 years old. Uh, he had just turned 50 and he got really sick. Um, mm. He had six bypass heart surgery. Uh, so we went into the hospital. So that kind of threw everything into effect at that point. Um, he came up with an agreement. I bought the business for, I think it was $800,000 at the time. Full note, attorneys, all that other stuff, and just made him payments. And um, so, yeah, it, and it hasn't always been an easy uh, deal. Of course, my dad got better. He's still alive today. Yep. Um, and uh, but the six bypass surgery, or heart surgery, that really scared him, and he thought he was maybe not going to make it. Um, so we transferred everything over to me and started making payments, and then just never looked back. Wow. I mean, we had five trucks, I think, back then. And now, how many you guys have? Forty three or forty four. I just yeah. sold some, and we bought some new ones. Yeah, I think we got forty three. Oh, it's the newest, right nicest now. stuff too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We just bought I don't know, seven or eight new trucks. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Jessica, how was it for you when you came into this whole family dynamic? I mean, the Creech family is a pretty yeah, strong... Yeah, because it's not just your... like no, It's no. your brother works there, your yes. cousin works there. It's your like... best friends work there. Yeah, I, mean... I got best friends that are working there now. And it's really been a... It's been a, a trying, challenging time, I tell you. Yeah. 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 So you come in and you guys are dating for how long and then you get married? Two years. Yeah. Okay. Worked there for two years. I jumped on board like pretty quick. Cause Boy, within a couple, two, three months. I did because yeah. my job was very strenuous. So yeah. and I that took a lot of time and he needed help. And I'm like, he was trying to do it all himself. And I'm like, you need, We were just. this is, I was like, we need a management team. This is too much for one person. You yeah. can't do it yeah. all. I can't do it all. We can't together do it all. Like it's just, you know. So that's when we started getting things lined out to get a management team and figuring out where we could, where we needed help the most. So, and it was, you know, I worked in the office realm of things, so I knew how to do a little bit of it, but not to the scale that we're at now. Especially, I mean, with your contracts in the city and the state mm -hmm. and Just DWIs and all the different hoops you have to drum through and the fines you can get and all the different things. I mean, I remember being over your office and hearing you guys and it was just like, you know, and no different than ours it's just you know so much going on phone numbers everybody's wanting you at one time yep. and you're just like you know you're always going at it and you know it's just a lot to take in and especially bringing a new staff and stuff in yeah. and then yeah you come in as a new one and then you're you're you the, have the stigma of the girlfriend you're you're the girlfriend of the <laughs> so owner like, now oh, and yeah. she's she now things she's are changing because she's whatever, she's you know? <laughs> helping justin do these implements and there was some pushback a little oh, bit yeah. in the beginning oh yeah i remember that i remember oh, that yeah. How did you guys stay aligned in that season? Communicate. And, and uh, there really wasn't ever really, any. Yeah. We never gotten into any kind of. I don't think we've argument. ever been into one argument before. 
oh, in our wow. whole relationship. Well, we're, we're, you're going to be our mentors now. Yeah. Huh? yeah. You're going to be our mentors now because yeah. we're going to... Yeah, no, and I think that's maybe what different between Jessica and I, uh, my relationship versus any other relationship I've ever been into. Um, and I can say the same. We really just, we're, we're meant to be together. We get along in every aspect. We do have differences, but it's never an argument. We never get mad. Um, and we never fight. We don't throw things. I mean, none of that stuff ever happens. You know, I still look at her today and... You know, she's just beautiful. I love every aspect of her. So it's, it's. I think maybe that has a lot to play in it too. So. Jessica, you. I mean, I mean, coming in and strong personality types of the brothers and the kids and everybody oh, yeah. else. It and, was a, it was a challenge. I mean, yeah. it was a, you know, I mean, she almost walked out. Yeah. Oh, I remember. I mean, yeah. her and I had talked, lots of talks. Yeah. What, what happened when you almost walked well, we out? Went, we were at the racetrack, and I can't remember. I think it was like a fundraiser for something that he did a rear and. All the kids were there. So Shelby, Dakota, Lacey, Aiden. and Those are Justin's, the kids four, that Justin yeah. yep. brought you. Yeah. Yep. So I got to meet them all. And I was like super excited because I'm like, you know, and I wasn't going out as like at that point, we weren't really, I mean, we were hanging out. It wasn't like I'm his girlfriend. Sure. You no, know, I was merely just. Testing the waters. Yeah, I was coming out to meet everyone. And it was just like, you know, the beams were on me <laughs> from all of them. And they stood next to him. He was not allowed to move across the table. Like, it was like, whew, guard was up. Mm -mm. And they just, I didn't get a real warm, fuzzy feeling at all. <laughs> you're like, it scared you're gonna me. Fight. I'm like, I have a daughter. And I'm like, oh, this isn't going to work if it's going to be like this. So I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to come. <laughs> yeah. And I was, you know, and I was on the phone with him. But then I went to spin class, which I did six days a week with Paul Landis. And he's yeah. like, no. You have to go. He's the nicest guy. You just gotta look past the kids. They'll, they're just kids. They don't know. I remember Paul telling me this story yeah. too. I remember this. We were riding front row at Spin. I remember Clara's day, and he's like, "You need to go." So he ended up picking me up and driving me out to the racetrack, and so. You That's funny that we that both simmered met in you that Paul. uncomfortable space. Yeah, I yep. just realized that. Right. We just mo both met you through Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never have an EI idea. The same with my relationship with Lane Nichols. I met him through Paul. Wow. Paul is really a, uh, a connector. Yeah, he's a connector. Yeah, he's a, mm -hmm. yeah, he's a People, big yeah, connector. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Nobody so, Jess, Paul. tell me the rest of it. So, well, I mean, it's just, it's all memory since then. <laughs> yeah. And now you guys shoot. I mean, how many employees did you guys have when you, when you guys, when you took it over, Justin? You had 16, you said? Uh, employees when I took over in 2004? From your dad? Yeah. Oh, uh, six. Six. Wow. Yeah, including I... that was including myself. Sure. And then yeah, so we had like six employees. Well, I think and then when I just... started, it was like it was under 20. twenty. Under twenty. Yeah. Then we went from twenty to sixty. And we were back at the old shop. That was the old yeah. old building. Yeah. So they were. Yeah, you guys were at the old shop, and then. Then we moved to in November, after we started dating, we moved into, eighty eighth. Yeah. Or one. Yeah, eighty eighth. Yeah. Maybe yeah. It, yeah. It was that quick. It's been a building process, yes. and uh, you know, through all of it, though, I'm, I'm, it amazes me that we did stay as strong as we have, and uh, and still continue today. Sure. Um, so it's pretty cool. I like it. Well, you divide. If you divide, it's tougher. If you're stronger, you're better in numbers. I mean, you're way better. I mean, yeah. As a couple and dynamic, you guys bring a, a uniqueness to your company that mm -hmm. is different than other people. And, and you know, and, and some of the challenges of working with your spouse too is that you know you're you bring it to work and you bring it home sometimes, and mm -hmm. everybody says it's not tough not to. But I mean, when your phone's still ringing twenty four hours off the day and everything's still going on, and when we have to go jump and go drive and mm -hmm. do all the other things too, it's it's hard not to bring it home. So it's it's uh, how do you guys deal with those difficulties? Man, we're day, just to day. day to day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every day is a different day. Yeah. So there's not a rule that you don't like talk about it no. um, after this time, or it's no. just no. We're gonna sometimes like in the evening, it's we'll like shut it down. Like sure. Nine o'clock, we're done talking Thumbs about off. work. Don't do yeah, we'll anything. just make it'll be some point in the evening. Yeah. It might be earlier. You shut your phone off. Oh yeah. Put it on silent. Put mm -hmm. downstairs on a charger. Just get it out of your face. Wow. Yeah, because it's so easy to grab it, and so I mean, it just never stops ringing. I'll go down there at ten o'clock, and I'll have seventeen missed text messages, yeah. you know, and it's like, 
Mm-hmm. Figure yeah. out what's important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, how did you get there? Because there's people that are like having a heart attack right now because they wouldn't even like yeah. not have their phone more than a foot away, especially in a 24 hour business. Like what, what day, what happened that day where it's like, I'm going to put my phone downstairs because it happened one day and then it just became a thing. And it just that. became a thing. Absolutely. The, my management team, I've entrusted my whole existence with my management team. We have everything in place from the CPAs that are overlooking them or my accountant. And then, you know, of course, my son's involved in it and my daughter and my best friend, Kenny. They're all part of this management team and Phil. Uh, so they're, you know, I got everybody that has my best interests looking after everything every day. Gives me the peace of mind that I don't have to do it. These guys can handle employee problems unless it's something major. That's when it's time really to get me involved. Sure. But, um, until then, and, and I've really just tried my hardest to disconnect. Believe me, it still happens, <laughs> Athena. Just the other day, I got yelled at by all of them for sticking my nose into business. <laughs> and I shouldn't be getting my nose involved in. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And they all told me, hey, we don't need you on this. Please stay out of it. Oh, okay. Fine. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. You know, take care of it. Stuff I don't need to be dealing with. Well, you know, and I, Athena and I have talked about this a lot, and I'm sure you guys see the same thing is sometimes we are the person that is blocking progress. And when I say yes. that is because we 100%. think that we're the only ones that can make those decisions and do things, we find out that we are not. I mean, we are holding progress up, not yes. doing it because we can only handle so much as ourselves. Yeah. And we can only take so much until we, we blow a gasket. And if we blow a gasket, it's not good. So if we have other people to be able to take some of that steam away from us, take some of that heat off of us, and then let us help run the business or guide the business than, than being in the business the whole time. And that's what our job, I think, really ultimately is, is just being the person behind the driver's seat, steering, you know, and the engine's doing its work, and that's all the people are doing their work, and, you know, you just got to guide them. And I don't believe, really, that you can just hire one manager that's going to step into your business and run it the way you do. You have to... F- train this person they have to watch you do what you do to make it work and, and you have to do that and that's one thing that we feel like we've done very well with our management team is uh, being involved and showing them and telling them and, and but then also letting them make decisions and mistakes as mm-hmm. well so they can learn from them yeah the biggest thing is the mistakes you know i was yeah. when i was talking to paul about this a long time and i was like you know you have so many people that work under you how do you do that and he goes Charlie, if I fix everything, they'll never learn. They'll he goes, never learn. I, he goes, I don't let them make the big mistakes. I let yes. them make the small mistakes. And, and he goes, like, I see the train wreck coming, and I let it happen because yep. if I don't, then I can't come to them and say, okay, what would we have done differently? Yep. What could we have done to make this not happen? Correct. Because they'll never grow from there. Yep. And that was like one of the different things for me too. It's like letting go in some of the reins. Like, you know, back in the day when we were much smaller and we were under 100 trips a day, yeah. I would be assigning the trips to the contract drivers, making sure it went out evenly, make sure that right person went out there. And then it was really hard for me to let that go. And then the team was like, hey, you know, and you went, and then I let them go. And then I watched it for a little bit and they'd always ask me a little bit help, you know, would you look at this grid and see if we how we can do it? And it's so easy for us because we've done it for so long. Mm-hmm. You know, we're 18 years, you 20 years it. into it. <laughs> yeah, we, we know how to look at it immediately and say, well, geez, we have the same vehicle going out four different times, but we have four different drivers taking it. We're not out of vehicles. We're just, we're, we're, we're assigning every vehicle to the whole entire fleet. Let's just yeah. use the same driver for the whole time in the same vehicle. And yeah. it was easy for us to see, but then diverts, the same thing with me. I let go in the, the, some of the divert stuff to Steven and really realizing I don't have to be there for every divert. As long as I got a good competent person, how I can teach them and do it. And I, I think you guys are in the same boat. It's like, you're right. I don't think in our size of company, one manager would be able to handle everything yeah. in there uh, and still be sane at the end of the day. You have to have a team. Mm-hmm. And it's. I think it's different for the owners because we have that mentality that failure is never an option. Right. I mean, we're gonna make it happen no matter what. And if it takes us sweat, tears, we're gonna make it happen. But some of the employees sometimes don't have that same concept like, right. okay, maybe we can let this one go. And we're like, well, we mean let it go. Mm-hmm. But I think one of the hardest things for me to let go was, and, and the whole thing was, is like, we have inventory, we have vehicles here. Why are they not out? Yes. Why, why are we letting this trip go? You know, we can have somebody in overtime. But the hardest thing for me was realizing that that guy had a trip nine hours from now, and it was a 12-hour day for him or a 14-hour day. Yeah. Am I really going to put that guy in that position to pick up that extra 250 bucks 
And when we figured out we can actually say no to some trips, mm -hmm. that's where I think a lot of the things change for us. Like, okay, we don't have to have that trip. Don't get me wrong. I, I get some clients that called me up and we had one just the other day. Uh, Yuri called me up from Seattle and said, Charlie, I got 15 people sick at the airport and your dispatch says they can't handle it. Is there anything you can do? And I, I just happened to be having some lunch with Athena upstairs and I was eating, I was in shorts, sandals, a polo. <laughs> You know, Yuri, I'm in shorts, sandals, and a polo right now, but I got some <laughs> jeans downstairs. I got a vest. I'll throw it on. He goes, Charlie, these are the coolest people. They're all, they're going on a trawler. They don't care how you show up. Just as long as you come and get them up and take them to the hotel. I'm like, yeah. So within 10 minutes, I jumped in a motor coach, did a check real quick, got it in there, picked them up within 30 minutes, had them in the hotel. And, and it was just like, you know, it was no big deal, but it was just one of those things that, you know, you're just like. Yuri would have done that for us though. hundred yeah. percent. And, he, and he, you know, he's our Seattle guy. He takes care of us in Seattle. He gives us rides back and forth and we drop stuff off of the port and all this other stuff. And, and uh, I think in fact, I've had you guys get a ride with him before. We have a couple guys Seattle guys, but he's one yeah. of them. Yeah. And been the one that took us in the. Yeah, maybe. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And, and I deal with the same and situations Jess from Seattle too. too. Yeah. They call me all the time. Oh, your dispatch. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. Your dispatch said they can't do it. Pete from Princess Tours. Your dispatch said they couldn't come get my uh, bus broke oh, down yeah. in Delta Junction. I'm like, hold on, Pete. We'll come get it. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a minute. Let me find out what's going on. You and you know, know that's, that's, but, that's just our team members knowing what they can handle, what they can't. Yes. And then that's where we kind of step in. I think as yeah. the owners and some of the other people is like, hey, we got some key clients that we have to take care of. And yeah. Yeah. Well, and you, ha you help them see a pathway through like yes. when we call yes. the hotels and the all the rooms are sold out well we talk to the general manager he knows where we can move a few pieces yes. to like make that happen and switch so drivers switch out who it is it you want the team to have a level of authority to where they're running it and making decisions but Correct. then there's this other piece where it's like oh i didn't even see that yes that makes sense now okay yeah let's do That's it or learning let me move that learning yes. moment, right yeah yeah so yeah. absolutely and i think the the first thing that i did was let go of dispatch because i was just like that charlie i was hands-on dispatch every time i walked in that office i'm looking at the board going why is this guy sitting out here yeah. why is this person not doing this that kind of i just i had to step away from it because i was stepping on everybody's toes doing it and the last thing that i want to be is a boss that micromanages anybody else i just don't yeah. feel that's the right way to do it it I've always created a good work environment that people wanted to come to work and a happy work environment. Um, so that's that's where we're at. I remember kind of bringing Kentucky Fried Chicken to you guys while you were <laughs> dispatching in the office yeah. and you were trying to eat a piece of chicken. Jess was running something else. And the whole that's when we we're just getting the air conditioning into the building. We we're yep. getting some coolness inside there because <laughs> it was so hot because all the computers and. You know, but it, we go back to sometimes revert back to our old ways because we think, okay, this is broke. We're going to fix it. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes we are the fix or, and, or, or and us just getting out of the way of everybody you know and i don't want to be that guy for I don't the rest of my it. life charlie and dana i don't i don't want to be in charge of all these people i don't want to do this until i die we want to be like the creatures we want to go out I and just go motor home <laughs> i want to go get in my motor home i want to travel i want to i want to be able to go enjoy life i mean I'm so proud live of you for brought a today, Jeep. Live for I know. today because tomorrow's not promised. Well, you know, but didn't it take all of that contrast from your earlier years to mm -hmm. kind of dial in what you do want? Because I feel as though there's a lot of dialogue that happens around what you don't want. Well, I don't want to yes. I don't want that in, in, in a vehicle. I don't want that in a house. I don't want that in a partner. But it's like, okay, well, what do you want? And you're like, I don't know. I heard this great analogy that um, in our for our industry, it's like getting into a cab and deciding, like telling the cab driver, "Don't take me to the airport." Okay, well, where do you want to go though? Mm -hmm. well, I know you don't want to go there, and and I feel like that's kind of that's that's the story. Is it's like you you know what you don't want now, and so it's opened up this this expanse to what what do I want? What makes what, me happy? What do I want? What makes me happy? Yeah. And, and honestly, I, I probably can speak for Jessica too. I, I don't even know what that is. With, yeah. And, and with, without change or without doing it, you just will never know, right? So a lot, of, a lot of times life is just the experience of taking the leap and seeing where it takes you. Um, I'm really, really looking towards, okay, I guess I'll back up. So I've always had the vision back from when I was working for my dad at a young age that I always wanted to create a business that would just run itself, that I didn't have to be day-to-day -day operations mm -hmm. all the time. 
it's taken this long to get it to that point as of right now. I feel like we're there. And then what do I do? Go start another business. So now we have another business we'll talk about here in just a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're ready to step back, maybe be half retired lifestyle, still come up and do the, uh, the management and uh, do quarterly meetings and, you know, continue all the financial stuff, but, uh, and just, um, I think Athena calls back. that as the president and the vice president of the company and just running the, 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 the employees, you know, just, just run your main people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not even running the main people. No. It's, um, I'm, I look at my role as I oversee the finances mm -hmm. and I, um, I basically encourage the leadership team. Mm -hmm. So what obstacles can I help you remove? How, how can I help you see that in a different way? We, we do learning exercises together. Mm -hmm. We're in book studies together. We're creating new neural pathways with the different things that we're learning and how we're sharing you know, each other's perspective. And so most of the momentum meetings that I have with the leadership team, a very small part of it is operations. We do talk about what do we need to discuss around the personnel and the structure, but it's really more about what's going on with you, how, how are things going at home, uh, what are you looking forward to right now, and, and what, what is the next stage for you in your life? Yep. And I don't remember anybody like pulling me aside and going, hey, let's just, let's just map out a plan to happiness for you. You know, what makes you happy? It's remarkable to me how I have these five questions that I ask everybody at every meeting just about, and it's the same five questions, but it's questions that if you don't have somebody asking you, you don't even think about it. And sometimes it can be busy here and they won't have an answer for me. Like, what was great last week? Like, what's a, what, what's a point in your life last week that was great, it was awesome? And they're like, oh my gosh, I gotta really think about that. And I'm like, really? We, ooh, we, we answer this an answer. question every week. Getting up on that wake surfboard. Oh, that man. was the best <laughs> time was of your, my life. That was your Dude, victory. You were there. <laughs> so, Four minutes of fame, baby. We'll Four sure minutes of fame. <laughs> there, there'll be a clip here. We'll, we'll get Nathaniel to put a clip up right here of, uh, Yes. So Justin yeah. got up on the board yes. and like if he'd had more experienced captain, he'd probably done it a little quicker. We were just uh, we were oh, no. Justin yeah. was on the, oh, he was our number two boarder <laughs> getting up. So yeah, the first one it had lots of experience and told me how to do it. So I was trying to recap oh, no, it. I don't, I don't think it had anything to do with you. It oh, had yeah. to do with uh, <laughs> with me. <laughs> yeah, but that was great. Did. No, it was, that fun. was not change the subject. No. Right. No. That was the best part of my last week or whatever. That was, that was awesome. Yes. That was last week. But you know, <laughs> sense of accomplishment. you'd be surprised when nobody, nobody else is asking that, you know? Yeah. And so it's like to stop and take a minute and go, yeah, because those are the little glimpses of happiness in our life. It's like, yeah, that was awesome actually. And so if I do more of that, it's going to equal more happiness. Yes. And something that I didn't realize when I was younger, especially starting out in business, was I didn't realize that how I felt about things was really my internal regulator to life. Okay. It was more like this idea that, oh, well, you just go and grind. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. It doesn't matter if you're tired, you're fatigued, you're in a bad mood or whatever. Don't, don't think about that. Just go get the, get the job done. And now I realize, oh my gosh, when I have that feeling of, uh, like I don't do it. Mm -hmm. When, if I wince at the thought of a request, that does not get done. Like I, I don't put that on my list. I, I just don't do things that make me think about, like the goal is to stay in this momentum of happiness, positivity, mm -hmm. like encouragement so that I can be that for others also. So why didn't I figure that out when I was younger that, hey, when I do things I don't like to do, when I'm compromising what I think is right, when I'm like going in all of these opposite directions, no wonder it creates misery and fatigue, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think that some of that stuff is in our, we have to go through it, just like yeah. we're letting our employees go through some of the things that they're going through, we have to learn it too. And, and fortunately, I don't think we had a lot of guidance, at least I know we didn't in starting the transportation no, company. I mean, we didn't. I didn't either. Yeah. We were feeling it out the whole way and yeah, like I mean, grabbing on to mentors. Ups and downs. Oh, 100%. Downs, yeah. Like an EKG. 
<laughs> Holy mackerel, man. It's an emotional roller coaster business is, especially anybody trying to start at a, you know, start a new business sure. or just, you know, you're young and you're trying to run a business. It's, it's Big emotional. Learning curve. Holy mackerel, man. It's, I know why a lot of people don't do it. And I know why there's more workers than there are business owners. And businesses, <laughs> yeah. if, they, if they get past yeah. that three year mark, they're, they're considered three to seven years. Yeah. Out yeah. of the woods. Yeah. Is, is there anything that you like remember as a young person in business that was just, a, it was a hard challenge that you had to overcome? Respect, mm. gaining the respect of older um, employees that I had working for me or older shops that we were working for. It was really a big respect issue. My dad had a lot of respect when he had the business. Um, but he grew it too. That's all he could ever manage was, you know, just that a level. certain amount of people, you know, and some people are just built that way. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely the respect portion of it. Building at a young age was really tough. Was it Gaining just the people, respect. they thought because you looked young that you were just young and Because dumb, I was or? young and I had guys that were working for me that were older than me and they were like, wow, how is this guy doing this? And I'm over here driving, working for him. Yeah. kind of situation so it made me dig really deep and uh, made me work harder than anyone else to gain that respect and now that I'm older you know of course I have the respect but my son's dealing with it now too because he's young he's 26 and he's having a problem right now with respect with all the older guys you know, and Dakota's such an easygoing guy. You know, that's the yeah. the real good thing about him, and he's very knowledgeable. So, you know, he's going to find his way, one hundred percent. Oh I, yeah, I believe 100%. that, he, and the team will too. And as you see him yeah. working with the heavies and all the other stuff that he's doing, I mean, he's mm -hmm. uh, he's out there working just as hard as them. It's not harder, and mm -hmm. I think he's gaining that respect from them. Yeah. So, what advice perception. did you give him? What did you tell him? Just hang I, in there. I or? just told him, hang in there, man, and uh, don't be afraid to do whatever job is needed. You cannot send somebody to go do a job that you are not willing to do yourself. Sure. It's just what it is. If we have to go shovel poop out in the middle of the road, we have to pick up a dead body, we have to, whatever it is, you have to go do it. Because if you don't do it, you can't expect somebody else to do it. Or at so, least be willing to do it. Be willing to do it. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've all done it. And he's done a really good job of it, so. Um, he's got my respect, hundred percent. He's got so mine he too. Just shows up to work at eight. Yeah, you know. eight, eight o'clock. Yeah. Is, it a, is it a clock puncher thing? Yeah, I, I feel like that kind of like. Oh, I overslept this morning. You know, we all have that, right? So, but yeah, <laughs> you know, he's, it's funny. He's I'll, I'll tell the guys here to clean the toilets, and they're like, "Well, why don't you clean the toilet?" I'm like, "All right, I'll go grab it and I'll also clean the toilet." And they're like, "I can't believe the boss cleaned the toilet." Yeah. Like, but it has to get done. It does yeah. the same thing. I go out there and get wash done. the tow trucks. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not above washing the tow trucks. Come it's on, so man. funny because so many people give me shit right? about washing. Why are you washing cars? This is mindless. This is easy. Yes. Something I enjoy doing. Sense of satisfaction. Yeah. And at the end of it, it's clean. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And nobody told me anything to do. And I'll go over your place and see you washing yeah. things. Yeah. Big Will and hanging out there with them and doing that stuff too. And, yeah, clean and sometimes that's just important for us and let our team know that we're out there just helping them there. I mean, so, I, I tell Athena sometimes. I'll go down to Luigi's and go buy like 30 or 40 pizzas. You know, they're seven, ten dollar pizzas, no big deal. Yeah. I'll go buy those and I'll go find all my drivers and go find out where they're at and see how they're doing. I'll just hand them pizzas and say, hey, here's some food for you guys. And or when they're super swamped, they'll see me out there at midnight you're driving with them and they're like, boss, you're out here too. I'm like, hey, we need some extra trips. Well, they, they're like, I can't believe the boss was out here driving last night. And I'm like, why? Yeah. The company still has to run. Yeah. I mean, if we're short employees, we have to make sure it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. We can't just not go you know i'm 100 yeah, i'm more the worker bee kind of like justin than, than sitting behind a computer because that that just drives me nuts yeah no yeah, i'm not I, a computer guy or, no <laughs> not no. a phone guy not a computer no, guy. i think that's why you and i, I can yeah. do it well yeah. but that's not what i, do. I can do it i can't do yeah. it well i can do yeah. it to a certain degree <laughs> yeah like well maybe not the computer part but i can answer the phone and dispatch i can, yeah, I, can I can answer too and i can send it to the right person <laughs> yeah. somebody called me up one day and says charlie i can't believe you can't put in a reservation i'm like if this is what the company is leading to about me putting a reservation, <laughs> we're in a lot more trouble than you guys think we are. I mean, yeah. if you want me to understand how to put a credit card in and take all this information, I could write it down on a piece of paper. Yep. We used to have these great cheat sheets that we'd do it, and then we'd oh give it to gosh, the people to do it. going back. I'm going back, but that, that's where we learned. I mean, that's where we where yeah. we started off, and that's what we learned and how we did it. I remember when we used to get in trouble for uh, map books. We used to uh, take a Xerox copy of the MacBook page back when they had the that Anchorage map book. Yeah. The and the, the we picked up this Google. guy one day, and one of my drivers had a map, and he's like, where'd you get that map? And he's like, our dispatch 
uh, copies these for it. Every one of them has a copyright written on there. And he called me the next day. He's like, hey, you guys got to buy some more books or I'm going to nail you for copyright infringement. I'm like, what? <laughs> Is that a thing? He's like, oh, you can't copy these things and give it. You need to buy one for every limo and all your cars. I'm like, well, how much are these things? They're like nine hundred dollars a piece yeah. back in the yeah, day. Back in oh, the yeah, day. yeah, we used to have them too. But you know, I mean, that was the evolution that we had yeah. back in the day when we were there and we were doing it. So it was just uh, different. So back on the question you asked, uh, the, the 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 evolution of, of Vulcan, of course, from from then to now. So so Jessica really brought a lot to the table when we started hanging out, and then she got involved in the business. Prior to her coming involved, and I think Athena, you were probably involved with Jessica on a lot of this stuff too, going digital with everything. And I was against it, and, you know, because I'm a paper guy. I've always been a paper guy. Paper receipts, paper log sheets for dispatching, everything. And, you know, she really opened my mind to a lot of that. And then I learned also a lot of stuff from from you and Charlie with the way you guys were running your business. So. You know, I, was, I take bits and pieces of everybody that I know in business and I'm like, oh, how can that benefit me? And then, of course, I didn't, wasn't the guy that could all put it together. She's the one that put it all together. Yeah. And got all those platforms up and running and, and got us to where we're at on Ring Central. Thank God we have Ring Central. I mean, we use that recording. Uh, we have to go back and listen to recordings all the time. Sure. All the you know, time. And uh, being the, have the ability to to answer the phones from anywhere mm -hmm. is just wonderful. Technology is crazy, right? And that's another thing that has really uh, projected or, or moved our business forward to was going all digital um, with everything. So thank you for everything that you've helped us with along the way too, because it's definitely been a team effort with quite a few people. Yeah. And you guys look at your competition. I don't think any of those guys are going quite to the levels you guys are. I mean, and, and they're yeah. still stuck in some of the older transitions and things they are because they're not willing to get out of their own way. And they, yeah. It's their way and they're still ticketing and doing things. I mean, I shoot, I remember, I, I can't even remember where the last place I was at and they had an old time clock there and mm -hmm. when a call came in, they stamped it in that time clock. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, well, shit, that's a blast pass. Where'd you get one of those? I saw those in 1970. Where'd you get that back? <laughs> you know, they retro now? What's going on? You know, Glenn that owns AT&W. Yeah. Um, uh, I've known him since I was a little kid and... Uh, I still go to his office today, and his impounds that he has in his yard are, are written on Take those it. those little cards. Oh yeah, the you white cards. Stamp, like, yeah. and you can stamp the year, make, model, and all sure. that stuff on there, and you hand write it out. And he's got his rolodex on there, and he's got all his impounded cars in his little rolodex there. And I was like, Glenn, you're in. And he asked me all the time, Justin, how do you go and do all this stuff and be away? I'm like, everything's digital, Glenn. Sure. Get with the program. I can access anything from anywhere in the world I'm at yeah. at any time. Yeah. It's whether I know how to log into it is one thing, but I you can access, access it. it. <laughs> Jess yeah. can access it. Yeah, she has money. access to it. She has access to Same all the thing I do. online. Yeah. We can transfer money. We can pay. I mean, whatever it is, sure. wherever we're at. Which yeah. When I think COVID taught us that is that we don't have to be in person for everything yeah. anymore. Everything was so Zoomed and everything was so like. We couldn't be so close together that we still had to run businesses, but we had to do it a little bit more remotely and doing it. And I think you've seen like brick and mortar. I mean, you see all these different offices now that have yeah. so much more offices opening now because people were letting offices go. They were paying an astronomical amount of money. And, yeah. you know, and now we all have, we have some overseas employees now that we didn't think we'd see, you yeah. know, five, seven years ago having somebody dispatching from Syria or wherever else we have people at now. Uh, Philippines. The Philippines Serbia. too. Serbia. Yeah. Serbia, so yeah. we actually have dispatchers that are dispatching with two way radios from other countries. And we're looking to that here. service now. Yeah. We yeah. Already... Some of maybe our night dispatch. Yeah. And that's what we did. Because it's hard to get employees. Well, and you like, know what? I mean, we, and we go back to Paul Landis, you know, brought us back there. Look at what he did for GCI. I mean, right before the pandemic, he started switching things over because he saw the writing on the wall for the employees and how to keep them. And his services, uh, he felt that could have been better, his customer response levels, everything else like that. Well, he felt like his customers were suffering and mm -hmm. he is a, he was in re, he was the responsible person for that, that area of the business. And so he had to make a decision. He couldn't just keep letting it roll. And he right. had a whole entire building right at the end of Hartzell here on the left-hand side. That was their whole call center. That thing was completely filled. You'll see the GCI colors there. Mm -hmm. If you go down Saddlewood and take a left, it's mm -hmm. the first building on the right-hand side. And that was all 
of their uh, customer service agents there. And, well, and uh, that's the largest employer in the state, right? Yeah, one of the largest employers, mm -hmm. private employers in the state is GCI. Wow. So him moving that call center and then talking to us. And Athena and I used to have, we were happened to be at the GCI Lodge when we were there and we met some of the people that were from call centers. They from, were managing the call centers. Yeah, they were the ones in account. charge of it. And uh, they were telling us about it. And I was like, really? That's interesting. Yeah, we're really talking about it. And then Athena actually called GCI the other day and had the most pleasant experience ever. Like the guy's like, is there anything else I can do to make your day? Is there he anything else I can do? He said keywords like, it, it is my job to make sure that you're taken care of. Have, uh, did you need anything else? Hmm. In perfect English. I mean, and, um, and I was like, no, I think you covered everything. Thank you so much. And he's like, and it was just this, this extended level of customer service that was so noticeable in a space right now where there's there's a lower level right now in America. Oh yeah, and it's so terrible. it it just like shines well high high and above. And I think we want that great customer service in our business. Yeah, and yes. we would love it if the people that lived in our community were the or our people that would that would bring <laughs> it. Country. However, it's still we still need it. We need respect so. back. We do. Absolutely. And you know what? I mean, just seeing that level of there. And now what, Athena and I have a personal assistant that is working for us. Uh, she, she, works, she lives in the Philippines. She lives mm -hmm. in the Philippines. And she is our personal assistant. So if she has a punch list of everything that needs to be done, what we can do. We, she works a split shift during different times. And we give her projects and things to do. And she takes care of it. She answers to Athena or myself. And we talk to her. And she doesn't deal with the rest of the team for the most part. But like if I got an important email, a text will come up and says, Charlie, look at she your email. She texts Charlie's email. She texts it because I don't check it near as much. If you send me a text, <laughs> I get it right away. Email, right. I'll check it at least once or twice a day. So, that's so it. So market and chain needs attention. Yep. So but yeah, I mean, and how that. great. And, and and the affordability was there. And, and you know, these people are super great and happy to have a position and a job that's providing for them and their family. And, um, you know, I, I'm... I'm I'm excited about this whole thing about having these new employees that we're getting because, you know, we have them. They, we they've have been them. working for us for many months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Charlie acts like it was Wait. something new. <laughs> well, it is. It's newer no, than our 24 is. years of doing yes, operations yes, the same way. We of... have not done this for a full year. We haven't done it for a full six months yet. This is just something that came on that Robin yeah. helped us with, and Dana was really backbone in this thing. And our team was a little bit hesitant at first, just like we were, but. Again, we got in the way, or I, we were getting in the way of this whole thing. I was like, we're gonna hire locals. We're gonna take care of making sure locals. But when you can't get the locals to come to work for you, what is your second option? You either have to downsize, or you have to take less work on, or you have to take things on, and you get this management team here. I, I kind of call it feeding the beast. We have, to, we have to have so much work to keep mm -hmm. all these people employed, to keep mm -hmm. the building on, to make our margins what we need to. So. We have to have that level of management and, and engagement and employees. Well, really, I think my uh, my the thread through my entrepreneur like journey has been to to keep curiosity open, and mm -hmm. so because of that, I'm always learning interesting things about interesting things that no one else cares about. And I will just trip my way through to somebody will say something about this book and then I'll pick that up and then I'll pick that up and it like comes into these like ideas that just come about and I'm never afraid to try new things. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I tell the team, let's run the experiment and see what happens. And Charlie's like, whoa, oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Let's talk, you and I need to talk about that more. And I'm like, okay, Sounds I guess like we're not doing yeah. that yet. <laughs> yeah. But really, it's that is part of what makes life fun for me. But well, we have to process it though, too. I mean, yeah. you guys process things at a different level and yeah, certain things. It takes things. us like six months to That's process. True. I, like, but there, there is that days. process piece. <laughs> However, it's like when somebody comes to you with an idea and you collaborate together, and then you're like, oh yeah, let's do this. I, why didn't we think about this before? And let and then go try it. And, and it's successful. Either way you win though, either it's this great success that catapults the business moving forward or it was an unintended outcome that you learned from, but the team member that got to deploy it feels even more empowered. Even more empowered, yeah. But what you're ultimately teaching the humans around you is how to step into courage. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in a place where fear is basically underlining everything everywhere it's like how do you denounce that that fear in that situation and step into courage because if 
everybody just took one little step into courage, like everything would be different all yeah, the time. 100%. And it, it's nothing is going to burn to the ground. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like it's the, the universe just doesn't operate that way. No. No, you but, just do it and you figure it out. And yeah. If it doesn't work, then you regroup and you move on to the, the, the other direction. Exactly. And it's really, it's kind of letting go of the how sometimes. There's been so many hmm. things that have developed over time because I couldn't see the whole picture, but I saw the first step. And mm -hmm. so it's like, I have a vision of getting to here. I don't know how the heck we're going to get there. But I think I have kind of like a little dot, like a rough draft. Sometimes Charlie and I call that all the, the crumbs. The shitty, rough, the shitty rough draft. That's my shitty rough draft. Just bear with me. We're working through the puzzle. <laughs> it's the first rough draft. I was like, well, how do we get from here to here? And how do we go from six to 42? Where's the rest of it? And she's like, it's my first shitty rough draft. Hold on, let me redo this. And she'll come we're up with there. the next one. I'm like, okay, now we're up to 20. Now we're just 20 missing. But yeah. it, it takes time. And I think it takes courage as a couple too. Yeah. too. There's times where it's he's just like, we're not doing it. And I'm like, I think I'm going to do it anyway. I think I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> And occasionally, in trouble. Okay, I will get in trouble for it. But but that's another piece of like my own courage. Like yeah. it's um, it's not about being um, this like I'm not against what Charlie's saying. I just see things it's in a different right way. And, it's about and sometimes I know I have to just like kind of step forward. And when I I work off of that. I, I work off of my own regulator inside when I know that I just have that feeling where I'm, I'm aligned with my gut feeling. I just listen to it like every single time. Mm -hmm. I, I stopped making excuses for why I just need to ignore that. It's like trusting <laughs> yourself uh, in this like whole new level. And sometimes it means not doing what he says. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, and I have to weigh that. I'm like, okay, is this big enough to where he's not going to like it and hmm. I'm going to do it anyway and I'm going to probably hear it for a little while, but will it be the best the, thing for the, the business? Right will it best be for the team? And, <clears throat> um, and yeah, that's, that's, those are the things that I think about. Like I don't just try to like make him crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the goal. Already no. There. And, already and, there. And, and you know, uh, I live my life fairly non-planned. I don't know what word you'd put for that, but sure. I'm, I'm not a planner. Spontaneous. Day-to-day is very spontaneous. Variety. <laughs> she is very much everything. Her until Up until my really, whole probably a couple planned. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I had a plan every day. Yeah, yeah. She was a, she's a planner. Everything has to be lined out, but she's... We've kind of morphed into this now half plan, half spontaneous lifestyle, maybe a little bit, and seems to be working for us, That's you know, because it's just mm -hmm. kind of it is. Um, but I, I feel you on the making the decisions and the uh, gut feeling, because um, I get that same gut feeling too. You know, do we do it? Do we do it? And and you can sit there and pick it apart and forever, and then not do it, but then you're never going to know if it was going to work. Or I did that with all my heavy records that I bought and uh, the rotator, you know, because sure. that would have been the biggest expense I ever expended in yeah. my life. You know, that was, was half a million dollars. And, you know, uh, yeah, I was on the beach in Hawaii when I made that purchase and I probably puked in the sand. I can't remember that. <laughs> but, you know, it was, it was one of those things where you know, do I do it? And you just roll the dice and you go, please don't bite. You know, it. I think that if you have any kind of relationship with a higher power or God or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call that, mm -hmm. that entity in your life, you, you're in alignment with that, that when you are, you're doing what you know is right inside mm -hmm. and you're out of alignment with that best situation when you are, um, feeling like oh my gosh this is a bad choice and i shouldn't be here right now like everybody has been in that place where it's like i should just leave yeah. right now and stop whatever's going on and when you don't listen it, it, it usually pay yeah 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 no but i think uh <clears throat> i think so far we've made all the right decisions and we're going to keep it so what we got is working and we're going to keep rolling with it there you and go and just keep moving forward well, pretty awesome right thank you guys what for episode is this Athena joining us 
Uh, you tell me. 17. Okay. 17. 17. Yeah. 17. Well, we're going to have a part two with these guys and we're going to yes. dive into uh, what it's like to partner together and um, share some, maybe some, some cool insight into that. So make sure you watch episode 18. Yes. Oh man. All it's right. It's going to be fun. Okay. Okay.